simple. This is a dinner on the 36th floor. I see love in front's eyes. Uh, okay, Obasia. <laughs> I feel like, yeah, things that some people said did affect me in some sort of fans play. See, I kind of felt like there was no point because it would find a way to like just turn it around or defensive. I still repeat, I'm very blunt. This is not for content or anything. I don't want to look bad here like, what is the person who. I had nothing. She was the only one I spoke to. You know, there are times when we are events. She pulls up a Porsche car. She gets. Hey, oh my God, she now looks as if she pulls up. She pulls up. Give a she, oh, it's not it. For what? My name is Barry. I don't understand. Dating other people. Why you say looking more successful? It's shaking me. <laughs> Get picture now. Do you understand? I the don't bigger, know. The bigger picture is. The bigger picture is friends in the upper channel. Hey guys, welcome back to yet another exciting video from Deb Deb. Today's video is the review of what went down on day 19 of Big Brother Nigeria reunion show, popularly known as BB Ninja reunion show of Pepe Dem sets. Before we get started, please do well by clicking the subscribe button and like this video. Without further ado, let's dive right into this video. As we've noticed that this week is all about relationship that went down in the house, and today's episode it was about Ebuka started by asking, by discussing the relationship between Fraud and Esther. Clips of why they were in the house and what window was played, and then Ebuka proceeded to ask Esther question. Ebuka then went on to ask Esther to when she said she killed the boy Fraud, and that she said it happened when there was a time we were in the kitchen and he was putting on one glasses like that, and so she had seen him and a thought just ran into her head that oh my god, this guy is looking cute, and that was it. That was when she started fancying him and. That was when the old, uh, you know, reciprocating his love back to fraud. That was when he all started. Went on to also tell her that most people felt she didn't like fraud. And she was like, oh, she did like fraud when in the house. And that she even liked him more outside the house. But yes, once she, she started liking him, she knew she actually liked him more in the house. But she did like him more outside the house. So I'm like, okay. Ebuka then asked Esther if after the Dubai trip where, you know, Fraud never asked her out if she still liked him and whatnot. And Esther was like, yeah, she still did like him. She was still in it, you know, even if he had not yet asked her to be girlfriend or anything, she was still there liking him. Ebuka then goes on to ask Fraud if, you know, they had a conversation to end what was between them. And Fraud was like, no, they never had a conversation. They never put an end to what they had. That was just a, oh, okay, do you and I'll do you. Flourish and I'll flourish. And why that was saying, Jackie cheap, cheap didn't say, and why this was happening, Jackie had chipped in saying, oh, I still see love in your high. <laughs> and and Fraud replies to him and say, okay, overseer, see of the world. <laughs> it's okay. Ebuka then asks Esther as to why, you know, she feels like why she started withdrawing from the fraud situation. And Esther went on to explain that there were times when she would hear something she had told fraud in confidential and then she would hear it from other people's mouth and she was always wondering, but I, she knew she only told fraud. So was it that fraud was speaking to other people and that there were just a whole lot of things that was going on and yeah. She even went on to also because Ebuka then also stated that, oh, was it also because of the tribal issue? and all then she went down to the code to confirm that actually yes at the beginning she had that issue of the tribal issue but later she 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 did know that you know it was something she could work with that it was not going to be a long time issue and all and she was ready to just work with it but yes she did that cross them um, thoughts 
cross her head. Yes, she had that thought, but it was something she knew she was always going to work with. So then Esther was asked as to why she never discussed the issue that was happening in her relationship with fraud. And she said why she never that she never saw reason as to why she had to do that because everybody knew fraud fraud was always is always a defensive person and all like it's always go, going to be on the defense mode and all. And then Ebuka was like, Oh, okay, like are you trying to say like the way it was always to the other housemate that was and she was like, Oh yeah. Even at the end of the clip we saw where she was saying that, you know, when in the house where everybody had complaints about fraud, she never had complaints because fraud never behaved the way it was behaving to other housemates with her. But after they left the house, all those things every other housemate had experienced, she started experiencing with fraud outside the house and that was things that were affecting the relationship and she could no longer deal with and this was also pro this was what also prompted her to not having the discussion with fraud as to oh let them end it and all of that and why they are just doing you flourish i flourish and fraud then comes to also now come and say oh no esther you're not the one that pulled out like it means i also had concerns and all of that and my mom, I'm like, okay, is this a battle of who pulled out of the relationship first? Like, is there going to be an award for who pulled out first or who didn't? Well, Fraud goes on to explain. And why he's explaining, he has talked about oh, when he left the house, you know, he went for events. Esther will pull up with Porsche. I'm like, yo, bro, how is that Porsche relating to the story? That she's pulling up in a, pro, in, in a push to you. How is that relating? And then he went on to talk about, um, yeah, Esther, you know, this all, he just really tried to paint Esther in the old, oh, this big god, um, small girl, big god, something and all that. You know, she asked people that he felt there were other people in the relationship, that she had other people in her mind. I'm like, yo, are you serious right now? Like, even when Esther was, ever, even when Esther was replying and all, it seemed like he never actually had this discussion with Esther before. But now you come on national TV and you are saying this. Like you are literally saying that she's a small girl, big god. Like she had old people, she was or people that were she was dating or being in relationship with that were providing her with all of that. Oh, she drove Porsche car. So is it that she couldn't um, um, dr um, drive Porsche car? She couldn't own a Porsche car. Even when Ebuka then asked him that, oh, were you, you know, um, jealous of the fact that she was now successful and when, by the time you got out of the house, and then he kept saying, and he, he was laughing and he was saying something about, oh, successful. So my man, I'm like, oh my God, okay, like, I, I don't know if anybody picked up on this. Like, so is it that you feel you can, she can't be successful than you or, or what, well, she can't be successful? I don't get it. Like, it's not a competition something. What is going on here, Mr. Fraud? And oh, well, I love the fact of how Esther came through to defend herself because you don't go on national TV to slander someone for things that you've never discussed with them, for things that you are not even sure of just because you are assuming it, just because of your own insecurity. You then feel you can blow it out of proportion and all. Mm -mm. But I love the way Esther undo this portion. She came out to him and started saying, I won't allow you to do that. I won't allow you um, um, say, um, to, to incriminate me and all of that. She came to defend herself and say, oh, that's what are you saying? I drove with a Porsche car and all oh, that my friends, you know, they sell like it was just a whole lot. And I'm like, oh, my God, like even how the Porsche car got to relate to the story was saying, I just don't understand. It was not in any form relating. So in a way, I don't know if it was his intention to paint, to, to paint Esther in such light. It just did not make sense. I just don't know what his, his end goal was, but it, it wasn't nice. And even when, um, like I said, that Ebuka had asked if he felt insecure about, you know, as as uh, being successful or what not, and the manner in, at which he had even replied that, oh, you know, that she not even like it should just that one is on another on another this thing. I'm like, oh my god, guy, fraud was going on. And even he fraud himself had talked about insecurities. I'm like, oh my god, like. How are you projecting your insecurities to other people? Like, and Esther even said something. Did you actually talk to me about it? Did you actually tell me that you were not comfortable with it and all? Oh, because it did not make sense. Then even then, he then goes on to explain that oh, he did hear people say them that our friends were giving her or something, something, and he wanted to know the relationship between her and those friends and all. Oh, and Esther went on to say, but he never actually spoke to me about it. And then he goes on to say, oh, that's private matter. Oga fraud. If it's private matter, why are you airing it on national TV? Why are you then speaking about it in the reunion? If you knew you did speak to her back then because it was private matter, why are you then saying it here on the public? Like, you have uh, you have a goal in mind that you want to do, which is to paint this girl in a bad light because I don't get it. 
it does not just make sense because where is the end goal you say this and you almost contradict yourself with the next thing you see at the end it doesn't make sense no it doesn't make sense someone make it make sense it doesn't like you are just really trying to paint her in a bad light but i'm super proud of esther with the way she came out to defend herself people might say oh she was loud and all that all that but yeah you know you can't you know sit somewhere and let somebody accuse you of something you didn't do or something that the person had opportunity to have discussed it with you over time but the person never discussed it it's just better for you to defend yourself before other people go on and start uh, mis mis misinterpreting who your personality is because it, it almost feels like fraud came to deflame Esther character on national tv and now uh, we're not going to stand for it so i love the fact that Esther actually defended herself against everything and clarified it against what fraud had said guys see with the way um fraud acted in this in tonight episode i feel fraud has not changed he's still that same person that he was i would take me that he was while he was in the house yeah even though people were like oh you know esther played his feelings and all but guys let's be reminded he was one kid that kept professing her love maybe esther you know carried it along or whatsoever but yeah today she even claimed that she liked him but guys you see that so there are just some habits of people that don't change the same thing fraud usually do for those housemates pick on unnecessary things defend himself over defend himself is the same thing he's doing right here like so he, he kept even saying something about oh why did you say that you know you um, 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 you fell out and all of that so it's almost like this guy cannot even accept that oh okay and, and esther did not even actually say that you know she fell out esther just said that you know they they just you know everybody is doing flourish let me flourish they are, they did not discuss about it if the relationship was any or not but because God is feeling like he's being i don't know maybe he's feeling this he's feeling this feeling of oh i'm being dumped on national tv and oh so okay i'm gonna deflame you i'm gonna deflame your character also you can't do this to me because there were just unnecessary things that he was saying trying to paint esther in the wrong light it was just a no-no and is esther a pity right now because the other housemates, I'm certain that they already know how fraud behaves, so it's not new to them. But it's like now Esther has to deal with all of this nonsense that the housemates had experienced back in the house, and now she has to deal with deal with all of this nonsense with fraud. Because at this point, I don't get it. But it's when both of them were being asked what's the relationship between them stands at the moment, Esther was like, as soon as she realized she couldn't trust fraud, that was it for her. It was all over. It's all over, Jackie. Then fraud then goes on to say, oh, immediately he got back into Nigeria. It was on a day your day my day my day and that was it in on ebuka goes to the next couple which is omoshola and kim opera and ebuka goes on to ask omoshola to where they where they are and all and omoshola goes on to say yes he still wants kim opera but after the house kim opera you know wanted to really achieve a lot she feels she's only 20 percent and needs to get a hundred percent and he quite understands it quite well and yeah he's just you know waiting for her to like he's just going to chill and wait for her but yes he did he does want kim opera and kim opera even knows that Ebuka then goes on to ask Kim Opera as to where she and Omoshola stood as at that day, at the day it was recorded. And then she goes on to say, oh, she doesn't have anything to say about that. She doesn't want to talk about that. Kim Opera then goes on to talk about how, you know, Omoshola selfishness keeps getting in the way in the sense that Omoshala puts himself first without thinking about the next person and it doesn't make sense if she also she's putting Omoshala first and Omoshala doesn't even rate her to put her first so at the end of the day she's losing on both sides and then it goes on to the whole conversation of oh you try we try you try to talk about things and you oh, no you don't try to talk about things and then Kimopra was like oh why are you trying to talk to me and then you are texting me on the phone don't you know where I am <laughs> Adzi, Adzi, this generation is a internet something. Like, you know, I get you, you want to speak in person and all of that, but we can't underestimate the power of, you know, phone and all of that. There are certain conversations that can just be have over the phone. Then Omoshala then goes on to even explain the fact that, you know, he had had a conversation on the phone with you and you had said, oh, I don't want to speak to you, I don't want to da 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 da. That would he then go and then come and knock on your door and come and look for you in person when 
when you have literally just told him you don't want to speak to him you already you know you could already read the tone from your message then why would he then go and then come in person so you can disgrace him in front of every other person that will be there and so that's why he kept his distance then came up was like oh then you could have tested me back and said you know let's meet in a mutual place and all of that all of that and at this moment i'm like see eh, these two people I don't know what the problem is, but this all oh, you could have spoken to me in person and all of that. I don't think it should be a problem. I feel I, I don't I don't know. Like I just feel yes, Omoshala does like Kim Oprah definitely hundred percent, but I don't know if Kim uh, reciprocates that or if Kim feels Omoshala on that same level. This is my own opinion. Okay, it's my op- opinion. I don't think. Kim Oprah actually feels Omoshala the way Omoshala feels and oh so it might be a little bit tricky for both of them and oh and then because all of these excuses are so why did you chat me why can't you come and see me in person I'm like oh my god like this I like it's really ooh, blah, blah. should it be really be a problem <laughs> should it really be a problem I don't know the magnitude of what the issue was that they needed to discuss but really should it really be a problem like Nah, so uh, that's my that's my own opinion. But anyway, it is what it is. Obosha still likes her, even wanted to go to even all that, all of that. We're like, oh no, 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 please don't do that. And my mind, I'm like, okay, and this is the person that you actually wanted him to come to your room, I mean, to come and speak to him in person. Even right now, he's trying to, you know, beg and you know, even be physical with you. You are saying, oh no, don't do that, and oh, like, what's going on? Are you trying to keep up with an appearance? It's like. It's, it doesn't look like Kim is feeling Omoshala the way Omoshala is feeling Kim. But it's okay. This is my own opinion. I wish them all the very best. Then Ebuka goes on to wrap the episode. And that was it for this episode. So guys, let me know in the comment section. What do you think about Kim Oprah and Omoshala? Do you think Kim Oprah actually likes Omoshala? Or is just a one-sided love from Omoshala to Kim Oprah? Also, what do you think about the incident that happened between Fraud and fraud and esther like what do you think about those two situations let me know in the comment section please remember also to subscribe to my youtube channel remember to like this video please help me and like this video it does a lot for my video share this video with loved ones thank you for watching until my next video stay blessed